Blood Gossip, a crazy podcast about DC, with your host E-Rock and PD. When we speak up, get your geeks up, cause you know you about to get geeked up. So sit back, relax, and get comfy. Lose your mind like Solomon Grundy, and listen to a show that won't be forgotten. Coming straight out of Gotham. DC Universe. Welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Gotham, episode 91. We are a fandom pop culture podcast and a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by BatmanOnFilm.com. Please check out all the other great shows on the network by heading on over to BOF and clicking the podcast drop down. There is a menu of, of wonderful shows for you to select, so please check those out. I'm your co host with the side of the Hudson River. I'm a senior contributor to Batman on Film. I'm Peter Arvera, and today we are recording. On September 24th, 2022, as always, I have a great show for you today. But before we get into the good stuff, I'd like to remind you, all our faithful listeners, if you take the time to rate and review the show on Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts and we read your review on air, you just won our Straight Outta Gotham monthly contest. So please, please enter, please review, please let us know how we're doing. And uh, it's uh, if you win, uh, you get a cool little uh, like goodie bag, you know. Remember when you used to go to the party at like Chuck E. Cheese and sports and stuff, and at the end you used to get that cool little like goodie bag at the end with all like the Tootsie Rolls and everything. It was great. So think of it like that, except for like comic books, and maybe you'll get like uh, I don't know a sticker or two. But let, now comes everyone's favorite part of the show: the time where I introduce my partner in crime, the man who set a single season home run record in T-ball with a grand total of 32 home runs. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of Long Island, the greatest man to ever walk barefoot on the beach, Eric Holzman. Good morning. Hello there. Howdy. How's everybody? Uh, I said good morning. Sorry, I just gave away when we're recording, but hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, Yes, thank you for bringing up another fabulous memory of mine. I don't remember it as well as the other ones because it was a long time ago. Uh, but I was really, I'm not even lying, I was a very, very good Little League baseball player. Uh, but I wound up not loving baseball anymore after a while, so kind of shifted my gears in life. Uh, so basically what you're telling me is you're Kyler Murray. <laughs> Kind of, yeah. I'm kind of Kyler Murray. There have been other guys, too. I think um, Chris Wanky, famously, uh, he actually did play baseball for a while, though. Then he went back to school to finish. Wasn't he like a 37-year-old <clears throat> freshman quarterback? He was like 20. <laughs> yeah, he was about 27 when he started. Yeah. Uh, or 25 or something like that. Because I think he was 27 when he got to the NFL. So he's one of the oldest rookies ever in football. But So, yeah. So that was uh, – um, that was – the t-ball days oh god i'd love to go back to those days when i had no cares in the world those <laughs> long island ramblers I, I didn't give a crap about anything just about just hitting what, dingers hitting dingers and what new Ding toy was dong. coming out yeah. that i wanted to get and uh but life i had what my chance I, guess. I was gonna get on the dairy queen sunday we didn't have dairy queen here really when i was a kid no wow oh, really? No, nope. was your ice cream? Uh, Friendlies. Bar? Did you guys have Friendlies in New Jersey? Yeah, we have Friendlies. Yep, Friendlies was where we would go. Uh, Carvel, famously. Carvel is probably the, the the big one. Obviously, yeah. But yeah, we didn't have Dairy Queen until actually, like, I want to say, like ten years ago uh-huh. here. Really? Wow. I know. It's it crazy when I tell people that, but Dairy when I moved to Florida, that was like the like the thing. I was like, oh crap, I can have Dairy Queen now. So, but yes. So <clears throat> we are in the midst of the Aaron Judge home run chase, I guess. Are we? No, I think we're at the finale. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're at. The, but we're. I guess we're. I said that because he's 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 been sitting on sixty uh-huh. for a little bit. But uh, yeah, I know that. Like we were talking about before we came on air, the big uproar yesterday was the game was on Apple Plus TV. And there was a lot of discussion about, oh, we don't have it. And then I believe uh, the attorney general, Letitia James, actually, a New York uh, attorney general, actually made a plea to MOB to have the game put on yes or um, just regular TV. And I'm like, well, yes, you have to pay. If you don't have cable, you're not going to have yes either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, what was the big deal with that? I don't know. 
But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a controversy up here at least, but it's been fun. And this whole season has been, the Yankee season has been so crazy overall, but man, this chase has been fun. And this season he's having. I've been enjoying it. I've had fun watching it. Uh, I, you know, I hope he breaks it rather, you know, sooner rather than later. I'm interested to see where he ends up for the grand total, you know, whether it's 61 or whatnot, but yeah, it's the season has been kind of crazy because they just started to play better baseball. They had went through a horrible tailspin. Yeah, in the second half of the year, like a month and a half. It was yeah, it was pretty rough. So. It's pretty rough. So yeah, so it's been good to watch them come back, um, start playing good baseball again. And I think you mentioned this before we hopped on as well, but Bader coming back and kind of injected a little bit of life into them this last week. So they're looking yeah. good. No, looking a little I'm bit excited. Better. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> so yeah, so. Let's get the baseball stuff out of the way early. So get throw that in there. Um, but we do have a another pack show for you guys. As always, we have a pack show. And we're going to actually start with a a couple of things we've been meaning to talk about for a while. But we're, we finally have seen all of this. So we're just going to throw it into like a nice bit of, bit of a little bit of a Marvel roundup show and film wise. And then we'll talk about some Marvel topics first. Uh, since we'll be in that area. So let's go through it, Pete. So Ms. Marvel, Morbius, and Thor Love and Thunder. Let's kind of just go through all three of them. So Ms. Marvel has been finished now for, I want to say, about two months. So it's been yeah. a, we, we've been meaning to talk about this, and we just haven't been. I It's been my fault. I haven't actually thrown it in. You've put it on many rundowns, and I'm just kind of like, okay. Let's Which talk is about crazy it because Eric is the biggest Marvel fan of, of all of us. Like, he loves Captain Marvel. He's the big. Like, that's the only comic book he actually reads. Is, is I don't read Marvel, Captain Marvel whatever. comics. Yeah. So like, it's like you know, for Eric to be holding off on this, I'm kind of like, dude, let's talk about this. I know you've been wanting to, and uh, so now here we are. We got this. But uh, I'm happy to talk about this with the biggest Marvel fan, not Marvel <laughs> comic, but the biggest Marvel sector of Marvel fan that I know of, and that's the champ here. So let's get it. Going. Okay. So. Really quick, uh, I mean, I've kind of dropped hints on the previous episodes before Pete finished watching it, so I, I didn't actually go through it. But uh, it was a show that I wasn't sure actually I was going to enjoy because just of the the title character is a younger younger woman, and it's, and I was afraid it might have been too young, too teenager based for me. And you hate female superheroes, and yeah, I hate female superheroes, but I love Captain Marvel. Go Which figure. No one makes uh, sense. But <laughs> all right, Eric, continue on. But uh, so yeah, so when it first started, the first couple episodes, I was like, "No, this isn't too bad," um, and I wound up g- loving it. I thought it was an excellent show. Uh, I thought it did a really good service, also to showing uh, Islam and and a Muslim family as being something other than terrorists. Uh, I think we we fall into that trope way too many times when we see Muslim characters on television. So I think it was very good in that regard as well. Um, I think I think the actress I'm forgetting her name now, but she was fantastic. Who played uh, Kamala Khan mm. and Ms. Marvel? She, the whole cast really was fantastic. Uh, her parents were hysterical. <laughs> yeah, her uh, dad's pretty good. He was pretty funny, right? Like the show, just it was a very well crafted show. It had enough of the fantastical elements that you expect from Marvel. Uh, a little bit of a deep backstory about how she came to be and what her powers were, uh, and then. Um, her obvious evolution as becoming a superhero by the end of the show. Uh, so it's, it was a lot of fun. And again, it's a pleasant surprise. And these shows are kind of better for me because the ones I don't expect going into like that I like, you actually feel more satisfied after watching. At least I do. So what did you think? I I really dug it. And I think I was really excited because she's from Jersey City. So she's really local. And that's cool. And that's like, you know, it's superhero in your own backyard. And it's like, it's it's kind of fun. And that's what it makes the MCU really, you know, fun because they're real places, right? New York. Right. New Jersey City and such. Um, and I love how, like you said, just how they did the deep dive culture. Like, I love shows about, you know, et, you know, just ethnic backgrounds and people and their heritage. And and you just you just realize, like, you're, you're Italian, you're, you know, you can be Pakistani, you can be Irish. It's like, everybody's mom acts the same way <laughs> it's like no matter yeah. where you're from mom is mom it's like she's just annoying and doesn't trust you but does and wants the best for you, you know, and it's cool and I, I dug the relationship with kamala and her mother and her dad and her brother was hysterical and her friends were great and watching her become a superhero was was fun I just, it's just like it was something like heartwarming about the whole show from beginning to end 
you know, just kind of like, you know, you just kind of felt for it because it's, you, we've all been there, right? In the guidance counselor's office, like, so what do you want to do the rest of your life? Like, I don't know. I want to go to sleep right now. Like, I'm tired. It's 8 30 <laughs> in the morning on a Tuesday. Why are you bothering me with this? Yeah, it's like we've all been there. So, yeah, uh, it, it was very relatable. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, I really dug it. And if they do a season two or what, and wherever she pops up further in the MCU, she's going to be in Marvel. So, like, that's, I guess, the next stage. So, who knows whether it's a show or a movie? Uh, you know, I'm down to see more. Yeah, obviously she's going to be in the Marvels. We know that. So she's going to be in the sequel to Captain Marvel uh, when that comes out. Uh, but it also is the other thing about the show that was kind of cool. is she, Like she we've all kind of I think everyone's kind of had this experience in life of feeling like an outcast because of th- certain things that they like. And not she, you, though, because you're just a champion. Well, no, that's not true. They're, I could tell stories, but the, the, I don't want to waste anybody's time. <laughs> but um. No, she like she was an outcast and everyone thought she was weird because she was into superheroes and, and you know, into the Avengers. She, and she loved Captain Marvel and everyone thought she was weird about it, um, which is crazy to me because it's like, how could you be weird in the MCU for liking superheroes? Well, yeah, that like that's one of the that's but what that's one of the cool things about the show, like yeah. how, how they how she is that person. <laughs> And I think we all can relate to that. We've all liked things in in life where other people are kind of like, ha ha ha, you like that or laugh at you. Pete, Pete was telling before we came on air, Pete was making fun of me because I like the Golden Girls. So uh, <laughs> I make fun of Garrett because he likes the twins. You know, I can't help it. <laughs> right. So like, you know, it's, it still happens in my older age, but you know, it's just a cool little thing. Eric about, likes Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, like, what crazy person likes that? <laughs> so, yeah. So like, it's just. No, it's just was a cool little thing that threw, because it's a Marvel show about superheroes and she's being made fun of because it was just a very, very nice little touch. Um, And it did reveal something at the end uh, that I don't think a lot of us saw coming. At least I didn't. Um, When they found out, hey, she she didn't just get these powers. She's actually a mutant. She might be a mutant of some sort. Uh, <laughs> right. So. That was that was a very interesting revelation um, at the end of the show. Obviously, it, we could sit here and talk about the, the very specific things that the show talked about. But what yeah. did you think of the post credit scene? I mean, I kind of expected something like that. Okay. Uh, you know, do you I think thought, there was like a little switcheroo, or do you think she just kind of like? No, I think I yeah, I think they like she manifested her and then they switched places. Okay. Like I wasn't sure if she like did like a little shape shift. Like oh. she was just thinking about Captain Marvel so much she started to <laughs> look like Captain Marvel and when she was like, Oh no. And I was like, she's like thinking like mom's gonna see me. I look like what do I look like? <laughs> I look know? like Carol Devers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, Okay. Like, I, I, so I'm curious. So I, everyone seems to side with you. So like you make sense. You, you're the Marvel expert, so <laughs> So yeah, so I that's what I think happened. Uh and obviously mm-hmm. it's probably going to bleed into the whatever they do in the Marvel, so. Uh, so um, like on a scale like 1 to 10, how stoked are you for Marvels? The Marvels? I mean, it didn't change my expectations for okay. it. Okay. I was I was I mean, I would see it anyway. Uh I do like this extra element added though. I do think it's cool that they're adding her to it and to the movie. And now that especially since I got to see the show, it does add a little bit of depth to the to the movie and to the character, and uh, so we'll see what happens going forward. I still believe they're going to do this Young Avengers thing so, somewhere down. And that's the line. what you want. You want you want that more than anything. You want that more than what's Fantastic Four. I think. No, I don't care. You're, actually, you're, I just you're big Young Avengers. Guy. It seems to be you the like way the young, you like you like the young heroes. You like the young heroes. That's fine. That's cool. You got like something. It just yeah. seems to be where they're headed. That's all. That's good. I mean, I'm glad that you're got, all aboard. You got Riri coming in in Wakanda Forever, so we're going to see her, and then she's going to be Ironheart. So you, they're they're kind of laying out the younger. Is that heroes. like your preferred, uh, like uh, like you know, Avengers comics to read? The Young Avengers. I have never read one Young Avengers comic. Oh, I thought you were telling us that because you're your big fan. I thought you were like, I thought you were doing like this fanboy prediction thing. Oh no 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 no! This is just. Oh. Me reading the tea leaves. I have no. Oh, tea leaves. No storyline. <laughs> <laughs> it's many storylines and many facets of life. You there can read go. tea leaves. It's it's a very it's a very very uh common thing to do. But all right, okay. I'll have to check that one out. Who wrote that? Bendis. Might have been. <laughs> Might have been. 
Oh, for the love of Lauer. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go for Ms. Marvel. We'll, we'll, we'll skip over Morbius. We'll do Thor love and thunder first because it's, they're both MCU titles. We'll go to the Sony title after, uh, but so Thor love and thunder, uh, Pete, what did you think? I'll let you take the lead on this one. I really dug it. I thought it was cool. It was fun. I liked it way more than Ragnarok. I thought Ragnarok sucked. I think I think Thor Love and Thunder is a really good movie. I, I was really into the story and I, I like the whole Jane aspect and I thought that was cool and I thought Bale was great as always and the ending was nice. I was like, oh wow, okay. So he's gonna take in this little girl and I was really blown away by it. I was really impressed. I thought it was nice. I thought the soundtrack worked. It, everything worked for me, you know? Like I was I thought it was really good. I, I was happy once he Start, once we started getting to like the Thor stuff, like after he left the Guardians, I was really like, "This is great!" It was like a really fun thrill ride. You know, once that once they put the pedal to the metal, it was fun. I really enjoyed it and I really dug it. Yeah, I mean that's a that's fair. It definitely is a fun, fun film. I'll, I can agree with that. And, and again, Bale was fantastic as Gore. Uh, he was really really good. Like his scenes, he steals the scene every scene he, he, that he's in. Uh, the story was, it was a little sad, the the whole Lady Thor Jane. It was, uh, but I thought thing. it was great. I mean, it was like, wow, like it added some weight to it. Yeah, it definitely did. And then the scene with, in, um, with, with Zeus and who played by Russell Crowe, <laughs> uh-huh. like that stuff was very, very cool. Very, very nice touch. Uh, Russell's been enjoying his, his retirement a little, uh, it looks like, I don't know if he's retired, but he's kind of looks like, <laughs> kind of looks like he's retired. He's put on a little bit of weight. Uh, but no, I, I definitely do think it's a fun film from beginning to end. It expands the lore. Mm-hmm. It continues the current track of Thor that they're telling the Taika Waititi. I, st- I still like the first shirts. Thor the most, but yes. I think this is because of the Jane element, which I think was what Ragnarok was missing. Like something serious. Like I just feel like Ragnarok was just one big joke after another, you know, I just, the Jane story really adds some weight and that really was the good balance to it. And I think that really says something like I could dig more Taika movies if they're more in line with Love and Thunder. But that's just me because I feel like a lot of people didn't like it. Like Carlos didn't like it. No, so there's, the it's, he, there's been not. this is to me has been the most divisive film MCU film recently. Uh, I felt like that even more than Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor Strange than, was divisive. Yeah, I mean, there's certain people who didn't like it. <clears throat> Which one? The first one or the second one? No, the second one. Really? Yeah, it's a lot of people, certain people didn't like it because of uh, it, way, it leaned too heavy into horror elements and oh, I guess God, people just aren't used to break these you know, man babies. Yeah. I, not, that, not for me. I, that was perfect. I love that stuff. That's if they want to watch a kid's movie, movie, tell them to watch Far From Spider-Man. So, yeah, and even Ragnarok, even though Ragnarok's kind of more of a, I would say more for kids, yeah. even though I love Jeff Goldblum's character. In it, so. it's a little uh, <laughs> that's, not, that's, not for me not that's for me. here or there because he's just fantastic i'll give but, it the pass but yeah love and thunder uh really enjoyed it really i did. did too like it was a it had a little bit of everything in it that's what i'll say it touched a little bit uh on everything i think you'd want from a film um like you said it has the comic the comedy stuff that tyke is known for it had the serious angle with the jane and the cancer which was yeah um so sad and then even because it that crossed over also with gore's character Mm -hmm. so really good i mean this is a this is one that i would buy physically like i enjoyed it that much i thought it was a lot of fun and the soundtrack was really good yeah Uh, overall this is a big hit for me um yeah i just a lot of the mcu lately you know outside of the disney plus stuff i haven't really been digging I, i think it was like Black Widow was I really enjoyed, but um, outside and of that, Doctor Strange, right? You oh like yeah, that. okay. So I can't remember. It's the, everything blends together at this point. So maybe <laughs> I misspoke, but um, yeah, I really dig it. At least Thor wise, you know, the the the, the middle two are kind of like, but this one they bookend nicely. If you ask me, one but one and four are really good. That's it. Like that's all you really need is one and four, right? Is because Jane's not in Ragnarok. Is Jane even in Thor two? I don't even remember. Yeah, she is. Okay. She is. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's kind of in two. She kind of has a bigger role uh, to me. Um, It's with the convergence and everything. And and I mean, I want to see what happens with Thor post Jane. Like, let's see what this is like. Yeah. That's where we're going now. So, yeah. And of course, it's always good to see Valkyrie. Uh, She was, she was great as well. 
good character. I like her character, so. Who is now the actual queen of New Asgard. It's funny. It's funny how that works. <laughs> I know, right? So, uh, very, very awesome. Uh, at least for the, the character, I thought it was good. Um, it was a good film. For all those characters, a very good film. So, we'll see going forward. And now, we'll, we'll talk quickly about Morbius, because I know you hated it. <laughs> so, um... I said when I saw it, I think because the expectations were so low when I saw it, I'm like, this really isn't that bad. Um, and I still, believe, I still don't think it was. It's it's a it's a as bad as people were saying it was. Uh, again, yes, it's not a good film by any stretch of the imagination. No. I would never say that. Uh, it has has a lot of problems. At some parts, it's just ridiculous. Like some parts where you're like, what the hell? <laughs> what, what does this even mean? Um, but. I thought, I just thought it was okay. Like, I just thought it was okay. Like, there's. Justice League 17 is okay. This is horrible. This movie's <laughs> bad. And, like, this is, like, one of the first movies I'm like, this movie's poorly edited. Like, things just, like, it just it just goes from, like, one thing to another. It's, like, a bunch of jump cuts. I rewatched some of the trailers. At one point, Tyrese had, like, this, like, cybernetic arm. They yep. never explain it. Tyrese's partner is so annoying in this cut of the movie. He's horrible. He's like a bad version of Eugene Levy. He's not funny at all. There's horrible connective tissue. They mentioned San Francisco. One point, Morbius is Venom. Um, you know, like they, they reshot the Keaton scenes. The Keaton scene in the trailer is different than the Keaton scene in the movie. The Keaton scene in the movie makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they're, they filmed it together because of COVID. <laughs> I I don't know what the hell Keaton's doing there. I don't know if there's an Adrian Tombs there to begin with. It's just like, oh, this is such a this is already such a mess on the Sony side, which is so great because we're going to see it all unfold. <laughs> there's no way none of this like doesn't come out. This is going to just they're just going to make these movies. I thought Morbius was just it's a hor utter horrible movie. In this Spider-Man Sony verse, it's the worst one. I liked. I definitely liked Carnage more than this one and there's still like a good like probably like 20 minutes of that movie of this movie that's on like at, on the floor too like right you could tell there's bits and pieces um that were taken out uh it's just yeah i was like oh god this there are it. parts of there and are they parts released of this. it in theaters twice i know there are parts of it that are very solid um and i like the backstory his backstory of him as a child how they handled that um like it's faithful it's just bad <laughs> right yeah and like I, I think i said this to you maybe on last show that jared harris is probably the two jareds obviously are the best um actors on the cast and jared harris gets kind of shorted uh, in his part um that's the doctor he plays mm -hmm. the doctor uh who kind of raises him in yeah a certain it's... sense so yeah, but I agree with you. It's not a good film by any stretch, and you're, every, all your critiques are are dead on. Like they're perfectly correct. It's it's very badly edited. Uh, you know, some there's a waste of characters, like you said. Like they like doesn't, and the trailer do does kind of give you an idea of something, and then they don't even. It doesn't show up in the film, and that happens in other things. But this is like very drastic. Uh, so yeah. you're right. And the so, end credit scene was ridiculous. It's um, like, I don't, like, I can't wrap my head around it. Like, first of all, like if Morbius is like trying to evade the cops, why, what is he doing in this Lamborghini convertible? Like, <laughs> first of all, and then where does tombs on this new world get the exact same outfit? <laughs> and yep. like, how does he find him? And like, why does, why does Morbius care about Spider-Man? We don't know yet. Yeah, as I'm saying, like for him to be like, I think it's got something to do with Spider Man. Are you in? He's like, Yeah. I'm like, well, <laughs> why? What does he know about Spider Man? There's is there a, there's no Spider Man on this world, as far as I know. Yeah, we don't. That's what I mean. We don't know. Did we so see, that's is what he makes in, it oh, wait, is, wasn't there isn't there a poster of a Spider Man in the background, right? Everyone, wasn't that a leaked image? I don't remember it in the movie. Because it was so bad I try to forget it. Um I don't know. Well, we haven't seen one yet, so who knows? I, I, it, it's a bad movie, man. It's just really bad. I was like, oh, God. Yep. I mean, like I said, it's just okay. Was Batgirl me. this bad? Was Batgirl so, really this bad? 
There's no way. I have no idea, Pete, because we never saw it. So <laughs> I have no idea if Batgirl was this bad. There's no way. Uh, anyway. But, but yeah. So interesting stuff. But it's it's kind of it kind of it's kind of keeping up with the crappiness of the Sony Spider Man film. So uh Spider Man universe. Yeah, films. I mean as much as I like Venom, Venom's not a good movie either. It's just <laughs> Right. So it's just a guilty pleasure know, film. They're they're consistent in that. I'll give them that. They're consistent in that part of the uh, their universe. I hope they get better. I hope the subsequent films that come out make make these ones make more sense. Uh, that's my hope. I I hope as well that somehow it does blend into the MCU and that clears things up as well there. I don't know how that's going to happen or what the future is, but we'll see. But yeah, um, you know, we're not, I don't know if we're going to... I'm pretty sure we're not going to get a sequel to this one. So... <laughs> So, uh, but it makes me wonder, like, are they? St- they're clearly they're still going forward with this. I mean, I guess not. Like Green Lantern had their post credit scene and nothing came out of it. So, well, we're getting Craven. I mean, okay, so I, yeah, but like, there's still time to like edit out to change that post credit scene, <laughs> like they did for Morbius. <laughs> they could change. True. It. That's true. Like, You're right. That's there, true. There's still time. So, but this is what I keep like. You, I know you guys have it like. like you're you're kind of hit or miss on the MCU Spider-Man films, right? So I'll yeah. put it that way. Um, but see, are you re- would you really feel confident him going back to Sony after these films? Yeah, well, because Sony made you know two really great Spider-Man films, uh, an okay one and amazing one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you get someone who knows, you know, the character. Hmm. Well, it all we'll depends see. on who's making the movie. It's not really like. I trust. Do I trust the studio to hire that director? Yeah, I, I would because they've done it before, you know. But like every once mm-hmm. in a while, you hire a director who's not going to pan out. Right. It happens. So we'll see. We'll see going forward. I do. I. I. They obviously seem like they're building to some kind of Sinister Six film. So we'll see what happens. I mean, they've wanted that for so long. I know. They, you know, they, they, they they're just they're just going for it. So maybe the all the solo films will suck, and then the ensemble one will be fantastic, and then everyone can kill what they wanted. I have no idea. Oh my god! Can you imagine? We'll see. What the hell are these guys gonna do? So we've got Venom, we've got Morbius, we've got Vulture, and we're gonna get Craven. So we've got we got you know we have four here. We're we gonna get a Rhino, or we're we gonna get so you know. I don't know. Who's the other ones? Who are, are they going to do? Are, are they going to bring Goblin back again? <laughs> I don't know. Doc Ock? I don't know. <clears throat> I have no idea. I don't know what they're going to do. Where's their Electro? Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just... I look forward to the next one. I just. I guess we'll find out for Craven. Yep. We'll do you have any out. faith in Craven? Uh, I don't, I, it, just based on what I've heard. I don't. I don't know. I mean, they seem to be making changes to the character. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not into that kind of stuff, I know you're very much a traditionalist when it comes to things. So you probably won't, might not be a film for you. Uh, but then again, it, they could do it well. And then you might watch it and say, you know what? It's not what I would do, but it worked. So you don't know. I personally, I'm wait and see. That's how I've come with most of these films now. Uh, you know, I've been surprised at some when they made changes and then some I've been like, yeah, that one didn't work for me. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. But I don't know. I don't know. I'll just wait and see how this goes. Uh, so for moving forward, uh, you mentioned Fantastic Four before. As we know, there's a, that film is coming out. Mm-hmm. And we have our writing team. So Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springer will be writing uh, Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. They, they're the duo that wrote Disaster Wedding. Mm-hmm. I have not seen that. I don't think I have either. So I don't know. Uh, they also wrote a, the Rebel Wilson comedy um, K-pop Lost in America, which is in development. So they're they're kind of. I love Rebel Wilson. Yeah, she's pretty good. She's great. So, and they've kind of yeah. So they've kind of had like they're kind of like it guys, I guess now because they seem like they have a lot of projects coming out and not a lot that's already been there. Uh, so we'll see what how it's going, but uh, we know this is coming out November of 2024. At least currently, that's the release date. November of 2024. Um, and they're not telling, we know they're not, it's not going to be an origin story. So 
we're getting a story that they're going to be established somehow, which makes me think they might be introduced beforehand. I don't know. Uh, hmm. What do you think, Pete? Uh, I think this is cool. Uh, I'm down with it. I don't know these guys, but like, you know, I see people online like, oh, no, they're high comedy writers. I feel like comedic writers or people who have history writing comedies write the hardest material. I feel like it's really hard to get people to laugh. You know, I feel like it's easy to make somebody sad. You, you know, you, you run over a dog on screen, everyone's going to get sad, right? Like, you know, it's hard to make people laugh. It's like mm-hmm. a joke doesn't always land. So, like, I'm down for it. I mean, I'll trust them until I see something in a trailer I don't like. And that's really where I'm going to go from here. Uh, we don't even know who's, who is uh, the Fantastic Four. Right. So, you know, that can also change expectations as well. So, you know, it, it, it's good news until I see something I don't like, basically. I'm down with it. They know better than I do. Do you like the idea that it's not an origin? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I I know the Fantastic Four. If they and right. if they finally if we're finally over this, every time we reboot something, we need an origin movie. <laughs> then uh, I think that's better for the genre. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think we all know that story pretty well already. Uh, so, you know, and like I said, they're going to might... watch Josh Trank's Fantastic Four tonight. You do that. You do that. But if they're going to also, if, if you know, they're going to, they might, like I said, they might introduce them in some other way beforehand or, or drop them in. We obviously, we already saw uh, Reed Richards in Dr. Strange, even though it wasn't this world, but uh, you know, we saw him. So I hope it's, I do hope he stays in the role. I, there's kind of like been mixed messages out there about whether he is or not. Yeah, I would so like it. Cool. It'd be cool if he stayed in the role, but we'll see what goes forward. But they do have writers now, guys. So the project is, you know, being penned. So look forward to that. Good news. Something else that was announced a while ago, well, kind of rumored and then confirmed and officially announced at D23 was Marvel doing the Thunderbolts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, we are. We will be getting uh, the Thunderbolts on July 26th, 2024. That's the current release date. Um, as you know, this is their kind of um, Suicide Squad crew. Uh, you know, bad guys doing good. Yeah. And it's going to be guys who we've all seen before. So Florence Pugh will be returning as Yelena Belova. Julia Louis Dreyfus will be Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Uh, David Harbour will return as Red Guardian. Wyatt Russell will be back as U.S. Agent. Uh, Hannah John Kamen will return as Ghost, and Olga Kirilenko will be back as Taskmaster. Also, because we were kind of speculating last time about uh, about you know if Captain if Sebastian Stan's Winter Soldier will appear in Captain America, he will be in this show. Uh, yeah, so, there, there's definitely gonna be some like connective tissue, government tissue right. there. Um, so. This sounds really exciting to me. Yep. You know, I to get, uh, I believe Ghost is there too, right? Yeah. To get her back. Because I, I seem to be like the only person who enjoyed Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> like, I'm excited to see Ghost again. But uh, Red Guardian, uh, Taskmaster, US Agent. Like, these are like the the best parts of probably, I mean, I guess, I, I wouldn't say Red Guardian's a villain, even though I guess technically he is, right? Right, <laughs> but like these villains have been the best part for for the, so long. It's like the, the villain problem in the MCU. Well, recently the villains have been the best part. Yeah, you know, Taskmaster, Taskmaster, Master. I can't talk. Taskmaster. Yes, uh, was fantastic. Like it was great. You know, everything about Black Widow was awesome. Yeah, uh, and, and and we didn't even talk about. I didn't talk about Pew. I love Pew. Pew 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 pew. It's <laughs> it's just like Thunderbolt sounds really exciting, man. It really does. Yeah, when you think of the people connected to it as well, uh, Florence Pugh is a A-list actress now, and Harbor obviously with the uh, Stranger Things being such a huge hit has because you know risen in in fame, and Julia Louis Dreyfus is a multiple Emmy winner. Like, you know, you have these really big names attached to this project. It's it's probably going to be very well done. Not that they can't be bad, but I feel really good when you see big names attached to something and that they're willing to actually put the work in mm-hmm. uh, and do the show. So I'm very excited for this. Uh, I, I always like these kinds of stories. That's why I've, I've always liked Suicide Squad and, you know, these kinds of stories where it's the bad guys doing good or Are you going to buy some Thunderbolt comics? Antihero. You know what? Maybe I will. I think you should. 
Maybe I will. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do some some we got a, research we got a hook. on this. We got, we got Holzman back uh, on the wagon. Here we go. <laughs> reading some comics. Eric Holzman so, reading Captain Marvel and Thunderbolts, baby. I don't know about that. Love it. You love to see it. <laughs> Holzmanitis. But yeah, so this is this is something to look forward to, guys. Uh it's a Marvel project that um you know not many people know about. I don't know much about it, but it's something you look forward to. We know the characters, so it'd, it'd be cool to see them all back together on screen again. Eric. Uh, yes. Do you ever just want to like sometimes bust out in song? I do. That's like my life. You I know, like you literally bust singing. out in song, song I don't know, all the time. Like, like, you drive me crazy. I love you, baby. Eric Holzman. <laughs> mm-hmm. Eric Holzman. Should I edit this out when, when we go there in the show? <laughs> Holzman. Okay. Well, you totally, dis- you totally destroyed the flow of the show, but that's okay. I'm coming back. I think I improved it. I think I improved it. This is like my hot sauce pool. I'm coming back. No, no, no. It's I'm coming not. back. Coming back. Reeling it back in. All right, so we are we are about <laughs> halfway through She-Hulk, uh, and uh-huh. depending on how you, who you talk to, certain people, it, this show has been very divisive uh, from just out there, people talking to people I know who watch it. Uh, some people hate it completely. I know you're a huge fan of it. You think people it's great. hate it? Yeah, there's some people who hate it. Wow, they have no taste. Um, but I think it's been pretty good. It's it's kind of just okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it. There's some episodes I like better than others, which is fine for every show. But one character who we got introduced early and we didn't see much of, but now she's coming back, is the character of Tatiana, played by Jamila Jamil. Yeah. Uh, so she did an interview with Entertainment Weekly where they kind of asked her about the character and how she came about. And um, I was surprised to find how much research she did for the part. Uh, you know, I know, I know these actors when they take on these roles, they get like cheat sheets of facts about the characters. But she mm-hmm. actually starts said she went back and started reading it. Uh, she's such a big fan, um, which was cool to read. And she's kind of an influencer, like what we would call now a, mm-hmm. a influencer in the show. She she's famous. She owns her own skincare line. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, you know, she's very, very much and she's big on social media, which is what, you know, which is the way of the world. Now, if you're big in these areas, you kind of have these things. Um, But she's I think she's fantastic as the character. Uh, You know, I didn't know much about her before this, but she's I think she's great. So, Pete, what do you think of the interview and of the character? I thought it was was very, very telling. Um, (laughs) It's how she was like, sometimes it's kind of uncomfortable being just the complete opposite of myself <laughs> like it's like <laughs> i have to be such a bad person it's so weird sometimes um i really dug it and you know like you said the research you put in and it really puts out in the show and you just you know and not just takes like not just to play uh what's it titania but like also just to be like the influencer like she put in the work of the show and everything and just the whole vibe she gives off when she's in court and whenever she's like you know when um when Jen goes to meet her at the, uh, I guess the influencer junket or whatever. And mm-hmm. you, know, you see her interact with the fans and these, it, it's just like spot on, just kind of like, I was like, Oh, like you're a Kardashian. <laughs> you right. Know? Yes. So it's, it's like, you just get that type of vibe and you know, it, it's been fun watching the show. I mean, personally, like I'm with me and Casey Walsh been telling you guys, like, this is like screen to page perfection. You know, a page to screen perfection. Like it's, it doesn't get any better than this. This is like the most faithful something's been adapted since like Superman seventy eight. <laughs> like this is so good, um, and uh, and I'm digging it the whole way through. And you know, it just this is the best thing they've done with the Hulk since uh, Incredible Hulk, in my opinion. I mean, there's not. They haven't really delved into her backstory yet, but if you know the character's backstory, and they're not going to, which is kind of cool, I kind of appreciate that. Yeah, I don't. But need she's, to. I mean, she's had a, she's kind of was a rough, had a rough life, um, and she kind of makes this deal and gets these powers, and then now you have this this character here. So, 
Uh, yeah, so it, I agree with you. I think she's fantastic. She's one of the better parts of the show for me. Like yeah. when she's on an episode, I like it more than when she's not. Sure. Uh, so I very much enjoyed it. And again, the show is very hit or miss. I love like the Nikki Ramos character. He's sterile. She's fantastic. I'm sorry. I, 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 guess I got to confuse the lawyer. Nikki's great. The, the lawyer guy's great too. Yes, he's great. Uh, he's a, actually a superhero veteran. He was on Arrow. He played. He was on Arrow. Uh, so it's it's just been very, very, very. I think it's been a very, very cool show. Like I, I guess I don't love it. There's certain things about it. I'm kind of like, uh, I could do without. Like what? Uh, the fourth wall stuff is a little much. On really? This. I don't it's... think it works. Uh, oh, I do. I think she's fantastic. I think Maslani is fantastic. Like she's so good, um, in the role, and th- that sells it. When you the when the when the main character is is great and the actress or actor playing them is great it sells the show much much more fantastic how do you feel about she hulk huh how do you feel about she hulk the cgi character oh uh it's fine like it doesn't detract from anything for me it's not the greatest but it's 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 fine i'm with you uh overall like i it doesn't it never once takes me out of it it's what i expected I I would prefer. I thought. I think for Jen and She Hulk, you could have got away with just a really like, you know, jacked actress. Um, I thought you could do that. Like, Maybe a WWE. No, like one of those chicks we saw in uh, in Justice League or Wonder Woman. You know, oh, one of those girls. Okay. Like I think. Uh, yeah, you, you it might have worked. I think the, uh, the, they're they have the physique and the build to uh, to play uh, the character She Hulk. I think they wanted to keep because of because this character is basically Jen just greed <laughs> bigger version. But I don't of think her. she looks like uh, uh, Maslani. Yeah, I don't that's think they, fair. I don't think She Hulk looks like her at all. So if you're if you're not gonna do, you know, Maslani green, then you could do whatever. What, would it have been weird? They don't look alike at all, in my opinion. A little, th- a little bit. I know. Um, do you think though. it would have been weird though if for an actor to take the role and then them dubbing her voice over when we know what she looked like? That might have been weird for the for maybe the that's I, I didn't I've actually never thought of that until now. So you may have a point. Maybe that's something that probably prevents that from happening, right? Because I don't know because you're hiring someone based on their physique. I don't know if they're actually like you know, right? A, whether they're a stunt you know a stunt person, that's probably who you would go to in that type of role is you probably end up hiring a stunt person. Cause I imagine, you know, that those, you know, when you want someone to hire Jason, <laughs> you've already, he's right. He's just the silent killer. Right. You hire the stunt man. Uh, <laughs> so you hire right, the I stunt mean, the reason Lou Ferrigno worked is because he didn't say anything. He was just screaming. And exactly. Flexing. You know, like he didn't have to, he didn't have to essentially act. He just had he, with his voice. Um, right. So, so that could be why that that's could be a good point. Why. That's a good point. Um, so. But the, the, the CGI She Hulk doesn't bother me one bit. Yeah, I don't think it looks like Jim, but that, but that still doesn't bother me either. I, I just, I dig it. Exactly. I like everything it, about it. Like, I can't help it. I think it's great. Yeah, it doesn't take me. Like I said, it doesn't take me out of it. Uh, you know. And I like that it's more Ally McBeal than it is Hulk. That's fair. That is a that's a good call. Yeah. It very much is I like more that it's of court a, stuff. I do. I yes. really dig that. That's fair. That's a good call. I, I, I I'd rather see her in awkward situations, you know, that lead to her fighting rather than just her mindlessly fighting. I mean, the whole reason she got her job is because she's She Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, the whole reason she got the job at the. the I think, law yeah, firm. that's what I think. Like, I think it's. I think they're very creative. I so, think uh, the, the, the it's cool. showrunner, I forget her name at the moment. But uh, um, I know it's wonderful. Cat Coiro? Cat Coiro? Is that her no. name? I think, it's, I think that's I think, her. I think her name's like G A U. Or Jessica Gao. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Wow. Jessica Gao. Yeah, so. G- Pat G- Coyro is the G- director, and I think Jessica Gao is the showrunner. Yeah, yeah so that's. I think she's doing a fantastic job. That's really. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, let's be honest. It, it, this show is, is highlighting a female character, uh, and they're doing an excellent job. For me, it. it's the second so. best show they put out behind Captain America Winter Soldier or Falcon Winter Soldier. I already, I'm like, wait, Captain America Winter No, Falcon Winter Soldier. Well, you're not wrong. No, I'm <laughs> not. I'm just jumping the gun. You're not technically wrong, so it's okay. That's all right. But, uh, um, yeah, no, I, 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 it's it's so good. I like it way better than Wanda. Well, so. I, hopefully they land the ending because the ending for Wanda ruined the whole show for me. That's and that's ridiculous that you that you could let the ending ruin the whole show for you because the show's fantastic. It's a good show, but, but the ending leaves on a bitter note. Like it's like, eh. 
Well, it it led into Doctor Strange, and we kind of got the reason why they didn't do anything to her. <laughs> I got it. I mean, I'm so, just happy. I'm just know. happy Doctor Strange did what he had to do. It took a while, but they got there. I guess so. So, one thing that we know is coming, uh, and I can't wait for it, uh, is Wakanda Forever. Uh, it actually comes out the weekend of my birthday, so I'm very, very looking forward to it. Really? Yes. Are you and going to Wakanda? I wish I could. I wish Wakanda was a real, real place. I would wheel, love to a go. Wheel place? Wheel it was place. a wheel place. Yes, I'd love to a go. wheel place. <laughs> Got a little tongue tied there, yes. But um, Empire Magazine is going, going to be releasing their Black, Black Panther exclusive. Uh, they did send out their colors. Um, their covers. Sorry, I can't talk. Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> their covers and... So we're getting a little, we got a little bit of the the visuals of what it's going to look like. Cover looks cool. Yeah, the covers, the couple ones that they released look are stunning. Um, one of them has Shuri, I always forget the queen's name, and Namor on the cover, and then another one's just like a headpiece of some sort from from Wakanda, and they, they both look beautiful. And as we know, yeah, this is a this movie is coming coming fast. And we know what it focuses on. It's obviously the aftermath of whatever happens to to T'Challa. We're gonna find out what happened to him, um, in the in the movie because we know what happened to Chadwick Boseman. What was the last time we've seen Black Panther in an MCU film? Uh, Endgame. Yeah. Okay. It was Endgame. Yeah. So I mean, they did the what ifs, and then he's his voice was on it. So if you want to count that, I guess you can. Uh, he was in a couple what ifs. No, it's just been live action. Yeah, live action, yeah. So, Queen Ramonda, that's her name, sorry. So, there we go. Uh, so, does this, did seeing these photos get you more excited? These covers are, I or... would say, here's the thing, like, I'm not really excited for this movie, I'm curious. Yeah, that's You fair. know, because it's like, what, like, I don't think I've ever experienced a movie like this where they just decided to not recast, and they're going to take the, you know, they're going to kind of honor the actor throughout the film with him actually being dead. It's very interesting. So I I'm very interested in it. You know, right. very curious about it. Um, I don't, I feel like, I feel weird saying I'm excited to see it. Cause I, I almost feel like it's almost like a funeral, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That, that's definitely a fair way to look at it. For Especially that, tra- that trailer. Yeah. even like it had bits of a funeral in it. Like, you know, like, yep. So, yeah. I, I don't know if excited is the right, word for me but uh i will check it out for sure yeah i'm i'm it's gonna be cool to see namor uh, i think on screen so i'm re- i'm looking forward to to that character uh appearing on screen and yeah you're right it's very much more of a uh i'm gonna call him the submariner i just everywhere i see him it just says namor yeah so i don't know maybe maybe that's what the humans call him yes so we'll see so, but yeah, but guys, if you if look forward for that, if you're interested in Wakanda Forever, uh, look forward for the Empire Magazine. But if you want to check out the uh, the photos, the cover photos, uh, of course, check go to our page or our Twitter handle and click on the link. You could see them there. Very very cool. All right, so who's ready for some more Constantine? And yes, I'm talking about the Keanu Reeves. You talking about Matt Ryan? Uh huh. Not Matt Ryan. Not Matt Ryan. No. We are getting a sequel to Constantine, which is I never thought I would hear those words come out. But yeah, we are. I getting think this a caught everybody by surprise. Yeah, very much by surprise. Um, Akiva Goldsman's writing the screenplay, and J.J. Abrams is, I guess, producing it. So we are getting a sequel. Kind of um, I feel like Keanu Reeves is hotter than ever right now. He's kind of like resurged. Yes. And that's basically what they're doing. They're just cashing in on Keanu Reeves at this point. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Like John Wick movies make a ton of movie and money. Uh, he was just in uh, Super Pets, right? He played Batman. Yes, he did. Um, I feel like he's and he's all over the internet just being Keanu. So I feel like he's hotter than ever. He's so, done a few other things too, right? Oh well, yeah, I mean, obviously he did the Matrix. That's right. Um, yeah, he's Resurrection back. that just came out. Mm-hmm. He did that. Uh, so yeah, he's been he's been busy. 
he's been busy and you're right it's it's like strike while the iron's hot with him uh did you like the first one but the constantine yeah it's i like it it's just it's it's weird because it's not like a true co- it's it's faithful but it's not it's there's liberties there's right. it's it's a weird there's weird liberties throughout that movie um and it's like I love Keanu, but like I know he's not a Constantine, but like the movie's kind of trippy in itself, <laughs> you know. So it's like you get caught in between. Like, do I? It's like I can't. Like, I want to be mad and like I guess not like this movie, but at the same time, like I do, you know. Mm-hmm. You know who does like it? James Wan. He's talked about it on like social media before mm-hmm. how much he loves the first Constantine, uh, in the movie, and uh, he's always like so underrated, which I found interesting. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this because like I, it's hard for me to turn down anything Keanu, right? Right, and uh, it's already like <laughs> it's already a movie that's like so interesting in itself that's like I, what you know, what are they gonna do? Um, I I <laughs> do you I'm, think, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I wonder with the ad with how super superhero films have blown up if they'll be more faithful to the source material You're in the sequel. Hair. Would you dye Keanu's hair blonde? Oh, I don't know if you could do that. <laughs> I don't know how he'd look with blonde hair. That's why I'm wondering if they would do that. But yeah. I mean, you know, we'll see. I just wonder if they're going to do some a more faithful story. Because you're right, think the so. movie think does Keanu, take liberties. It's Keanu. You hire Keanu to be Keanu. So. Right? Like he, yeah. I he's mean, not going to have do. a <laughs> Who? Somebody shared, I think it might have been Ricky Church, which shared a... Uh, who was, no, I think it was Chris Roach who shared a British Keanu from like Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> and he's like, you still miss that accent? I'm like, well, I mean, I guess you're right. Like we have, <laughs> maybe he's improved over his, you know, <laughs> acting career. We'll see. But I, yeah, I don't know. Um... Keanu's always never been like the best actor, but he's in the right situation. You know, like he, he figured out his roles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, he's very much himself in a lot of his roles. Uh, I don't, I don't see much range in him as an actor, but it's weird. He has this presence that people just are attracted to. Like they're very drawn to his films. It's very, very strange. Uh, I know why women like him. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, women. If, since I, I Keanu you know. Reeves, The Matrix, Point Break, <laughs> Speed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean. You know, you know, and he did great action movies. Right. And then like, but when you see him in things like Devil's Bill, Advocate. He's getting that, Bill and Ted. Uh, what's the other movie he he's in? Range. Where he plays the doctor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's been in other films. What I is just, it? Oh, was it one he did with Charlize Theron? Was it like Sweet November or something like that? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Like, there's movies like that where I'm kind of like, yeah, he's just Keanu Reeves being himself here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, I'll go see this because I actually did like the first movie. Uh, I didn't think it was great or by any great shakes, but I did enjoy it. So I'll definitely go give this give this a watch and see what happens. But I do think it's cool they're re- resurrecting the character, bringing him back, and who knows if we'll get something in an ensemble deal with them down the do road. You, do you think that uh, Cavill Superman will show up in this movie? <laughs> well, if he is going to show up, I hope they don't tease that he's going to be <laughs> going to be somewhere else talking about it because that would cause a huge uproar uh if that happens so i hope okay. if he is there uh, I just, you, know, you never know when cavill superman's gonna show up next you're right i feel like that is the uh the current status of superman like like he might be in every project we just don't know that's what it is uh, I know that upsets some people, and I'm sorry about that. I, I'm a fan of the character myself, and I would like to see him done a little bit more justice, quote unquote, uh, justice than that he than he's had recently. But for some reason, he's a tough character to do on screen. I don't understand why. But I mean, since the original films, all the other ones have been really, really mixed, reviewed, and covered. So, okay, we'll, yeah, we'll Eric see. Holzman. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe he will see him in a little over a month or maybe. a little less than a month. <laughs> maybe, maybe get a little bit of that Holzman trivia. Who knows? We'll see. We will see. So, 
as we know, fall has just begun and smooth sack summer is come slowly coming to an end. So if you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. As summer comes to an end and we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in Below the Waist Grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. I really, really do <laughs> <laughs> anyway, start the new season the right way and join over 6 million <laughs> men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code Gotham at Manscaped.com. And again, guys, as we tell you all the time, buy the this... boxers because your balls will thank you. <laughs> yes, your balls will thank you. But if you buy the complete performance package 4.0, you get the boxers as part of the deal. You also get the ear trimmer. You get the, as Pete and I have told you about, the crop preserver and the crop reviver with that fantastic trademark manscape scent. <laughs> it's like crazy. Uh, you do get the boxer briefs and you get that nice little travel bag that they conveniently call the shed. Uh, very, very funny. And don't forget with this one also you could get included, you'll get the the Shears 2.0, which is a luxury nail grooming kit. So if you want to keep your nails nice and neat and clean, uh, you get nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors with those. And yeah, like this has made man, I will say, since I've since we've had this partnership, this has made uh that part of of grooming much easier and much more uh mm-hmm. much more structured i guess because now you have all these things you're like i'm just gonna take my my little shed here and i'm gonna go and i'm gonna just clip 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 yep clip put on the the products little spritz here and there and you're good spritz, to go spritz, spritz. yep you're a little good to go so all right okay let's do it <laughs> yep so don't forget you get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code gotham at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code gotham at manscaped.com Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh ball fall. Well, someone who probably always had fresh balls was James Bond, right? Like he had to. He 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 had all these beautiful women. He's got to. In his life. And you know James Bond was always going to keep things fresh and neat down there. But we are in a position right now with the character where we just finished a great run with Daniel Craig, 16 years. I didn't even realize it'd been that long. Wow. Right. Um, and yes, so good run. Yeah. And we're in the process of getting, of building a new James Bond story around a new James Bond um, actor and Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson sat down with THR to talk about how this is going. Uh, I can't about. believe her name is Broccoli. I can't either. <laughs> uh, it's a little crazy. <laughs> but um, they talked about the post Daniel Craig, James Bond's, I guess, development and search. Uh, so they're say- first they said, which was kind of revealing, that they kind of want to focus on getting the villain first. I thought that was interesting because it's like, well, if don't you need to know who the next Bond is for the next 15 years? <laughs> Yeah, you know yeah. your villains are one and done. But uh, all right, we'll see what happens. Because if it's interesting to build Bond next to the villain, because isn't the villain going to be different in the next movie? <laughs> yeah, I mean there are some that overlap, like Blowfield did in in the in the Craig series. Uh, he's one of the ones that was there for a couple of films. And mm-hmm. There are ones that do attach, uh, but yes, historically each one has its own contained villain. Uh, so. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they go a little bit in, in depth about what they're looking for, uh, how they're going to develop the character in this new world that we live in. Obviously, a lot of the traditional James Bond tropes, I guess you could call them, may not be acceptable nowadays. Uh, they're fine for me, but I'm I'm used to the character and I just expect it to be the same. So are they going to tie in the Queen's death? Uh you know, since James does work for uh, the government, he's a government agent. I they made it seem like they were going to. They did. They made it very clear, like, well, now he works for the king. Yes. So <laughs> exactly, that's like, exactly what they say. Yeah, you're right. So I was like, okay, I guess I don't know if they'll do anything really about it, other than just like, you know, they'll mention it, and I think that that'll be it. To be really honest. Yes, and they really don't go into what they're looking for. Uh, in a new actor, they just say that, and the actor taking on this role has to think about how it's going to change their own life. Um, become an ambassador for the character. How good's talk- your British accent? 
<laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it. Uh, no, and I need to, I would need to, I have done, you know, I've been working out and building some muscle, but I'd need to go on a little bit more. Of a, a pip, pip, cheerio, a little sport to tea. You could do it. There you go. There we go. Hello, money bunny. <laughs> they also ask about this because there's been speculation about maybe doing a series of James on James Bond, and they said no. Uh, they they want to strictly keep him on the big screen. I think that's a good idea. I do too. I think you know. I think you could do an offshoot maybe of something related to that universe, but I don't think you could do a James Bond show based on that. So, what about a show on Money Penny? Yeah, why not? Yeah, or Felix Leiter. That's about it. Yeah, or maybe like the villains. Hmm. I don't know. Like have some kind of villain deal with uh, the development of one of those characters. I don't know, but I don't think you could do a James Bond TV show. So I'm happy to say that they're going to keep it on film. But yeah, guys, it's very early in the process, according to the the, the producers and creators, and they they don't have they really don't have anyone in mind. Just what I told you that whoever they do. Uh, pick they're gonna have to know it's a big commitment uh of their life i hope so. i hope you realize it's a big commitment. <laughs> it's just a new character it's james bond he's I been know. around for a while like you should know it's kind of like i you know it's like remember when affleck first got cast as batman and like so they tell you like your life's gonna change people are gonna talk about you nonstop. Blah, blah, blah. and it's like well you know they kind of do that already, dude. Like you're a celebrity, <laughs> like, and then you take another <laughs> role. Like, yeah, you you should you should know this guy. It's like this isn't news. Yeah, I think the the thing I the only thing I think it does is it brings a whole new level of fan to your life, mm. right? I think that's what it does. Like, obviously, we see in in this world, especially specifically the Batman casting, how big a deal it was and how big a deal it always is, and you're getting, bringing on a new level of scrutiny uh, if you take that part. Like mm-hmm. we saw what happened with Pattinson's casting. Like people were like, "Oh, he's the vampire from the Twilight movies," and you know, so it it does increase the level of of scrutiny you're gonna take when you take on an iconic character, and I think that's what they're talking about. So, Holds me. so we have a little bit of casting news. Uh, I think the last episode we talked about the Nun Two Ooh. was actually being made, and you know I'm excited for it, Eric. I know you're not because you're. <laughs> Dud, but I'm excited for the nun too. I didn't like the nun. Well, I don't like you. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, um, <laughs> if you are interested in the nun too, Storm Reed will be cast in the film again. We Do don't not know. know. Yeah, I don't know who role. she's playing. Uh, but if you're fans of Euphoria, she is. Uh, she plays opposite Zendaya's character on Euphoria. I feel kind of bad because so. no one ever talks about her. It's always about Zendaya. Well, Zendaya's done more, I think. So you kind of have, you know, she's a bigger star. And then now Sydney Sweeney as well um, has kind of broken out as another big star. But she also did White Lotus. And she's uh, doing Madam Web. Yeah, she's doing Madam Web. So she's her star has grown a little bit. But yeah, so we have a casting announcement. Uh, and... She's, chances are she's going to get scared shitless. <laughs> We're yes. going to see her scream a lot. <laughs> yes. It's like so. I looked at you I was like, you are, you seem like you're going to scream a lot in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, these movies are always based on scream queens. So <laughs> some kind of uh scream Hopefully she on. leads the next generation. Yeah. So this don't this is a Juan and Saffron produced a vehicle as well. As we know, Juan is the producer of all the Conjuring films, and this is part of that universe. So uh, it's another, uh, um, another do you, installment. Do you think Cavill Superman will show up for this movie? <laughs> we can only hope, Pete. It's we new line. Only... Do you think Hamada can get him in before the <laughs> before he leaves? We can only hope that happens. Oh God, that would be fantastic. Just how the you see the nun doing all the yeah, stuff, like, and then Superman just so comes like, Not only am I a fan of truth, but I'm a big fan of church. You're like what? That would be great. Oh God. Oh man. Oh, I hope they're listening and think seriously think about this. Yeah, I, if they're listening. Yeah, I hope you think about this. Oh, God, that would be fantastic. From the studio that brought you Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. 
which, Superman versus hey, the Nun. I like that movie. I've never I, seen it. Oh, seen it. it's crazy. Is it? And it's based on a comic book. Did you know that? Yeah, no. I know. Do you read the comic book? No, but I I should after I always you say should, after you I see should a movie, get, re, get Eric to read comics today, kids. After I read a after I see a movie, I'm always like, oh, that's a comic. I should go read it. But Atomic Blonde was a comic. Yeah, that. Well, I hope the comic was better than the movie. I, I love, love the movie. The movie was okay. Like it, you're it was not just fun. Okay. I don't know. Cisco and Holzman. It was kind of like that movie was kind of like the one with Jennifer Lawrence, where she played the Russian operative. I forget the name of Russian. that one. Red? Was it just? No, it wasn't red. I, I do forget. This, I do this horrible impression of Reno, and it sounds Russian, but I really like doing it. No, your impression of Reno sounds Russian crossed over with caveman. <laughs> me, <laughs> Reno. You know, like movie. Me, like movie more. Blade Runner. Yes, yes. I like Blade Runner. Montreal. No, no, like hockey. Me, high evolution. Me, watch film. Cinema. I don't oh, go boy. to the movies. I watch cinema with my popcorn. Yes, me, Reno. Yeah, Maybe he's not. I know it sounds nothing like him. <laughs> nothing. Like, he's like he's. Like, Reno gets so mad. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's so. It's just. It's not that it sounds so like you at all. It's just. It's that voice is just funny. Yes, yes, me, Reno. I like. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't be mad because I'm like that sounds nothing. Nothing like, like me. It. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even be upset about it. It's that's just nothing. It's like fun me. to do it. Just do it in your spirit. I'm like, oh, that is it. Yes, yes, me, Reno. No. You know, like, <laughs> you watch Blade Runner 2049? Get out of my face, you idiots. You know what movie you watch? I watch cinema. So it wouldn't be moving right along. Let's just move right along. <laughs> it wouldn't be a normal year if Mar- if um Mel Gibson wasn't complaining about something. Uh, and, and this time he's complaining about everyone's favorite subject. Yes. Our, we all know how people have loved the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. Especially and how, Nick Zednick. And how <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and and just how that has oh, gone on so smoothly and everyone just loves everything that's happening. Um <laughs> Mel Gibson it was talk was being asked about Lethal Weapon Five. And this is what he said. The only delay is now with all the shakeups at Warner's with Discovery coming in and the new boss, David Zaslav. They chop everyone else up and throw them away and get new people. It always takes time for these companies to regroup. So that's been a delay, but I'm pretty confident we'll get this one on its feet. Probably shoot it in the first quarter of the new year. Does Mel not think the death of the director had anything to do with the delay? Yeah, I think that might also have had a little Did something. Mel forget about that? To do it. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to laugh at uh, the late, great Dick Donner, but like, did this smell? <laughs> because <laughs> he in the same interview he even talks about the screenplay that daughter helped develop yeah you know i just uh, i think it's interesting because <laughs> it's just like i put that in there because i'm like i want people to like at least people who listen to us like yeah like this is th- this is going to take time to figure out like it's this isn't going to happen overnight so even within the industry they're like yeah like you could see like he sees it from more of a up close and personal perspective you know with a project that he's openly working on within that studio and it's just this is going to take time and you know who knows the hell zaslov's real actual plan is you guys want to talk about plans who knows the hell this guy's actual his actual plan is to flip this place you know yeah we touched on that last week uh but yeah i mean it definitely it definitely does seem like his that's where they're headed uh, that he definitely wants to try and flip this in some sense in a couple years. We talked about the Comcast story that's been out there of them merging NBC Universal and Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, I don't. I hope that doesn't happen for a number of reasons. Uh, I don't like monopolistic things. Uh, we've seen it now with Disney. Uh, you know they have Fox, and you know they bought Marvel years ago, and Star Wars, and Lucasfilm, and I mean. It's cool in a way because if for streaming services, it's one stop shopping. You just go, <laughs> you don't have to worry about buying all these different ones. Mm-hmm. You can just buy the one. But, um, but yeah, the, the, it definitely does seem like that's where we're headed with, with this Warner Brothers Discovery. And they're just trying to get all the ducks in a row, even though they deny it. Uh, they're like, no, we're doing what's best for the Warner Brothers Discovery and what you expect them to say. But yeah, so. 
you know, Zaslav's Gibson's critique, like you said, is kind of funny to begin with uh, because of Donner's passing. And like he even talks in the in the article that's sitting down with uh, Wank, the other writer uh, on it and going through the script and what what um, Donner might have wanted to do. So, you know, I don't know, but yeah, it's an un- like your overarching story of it being an uncertain time in, in the studio. You're 100 percent correct. And we've seen that play out already. So and it's going to take time. Uh, I think that's what but it's also this- like if he flips it, it's like, oh, man, we're just starting over again. Right. That's why the last the last episode when we talked about, well, maybe he'll sell off parts of it and maybe he'll sell off DC, mm-hmm. you know, as its own separate thing. I don't know. We'll don't know. Who knows? This guy. But he's doing yeah. stuff. That's- yeah. I mean, he's he's obviously been tasked when he took over. Like I said, they found out things after they bought that they didn't know before in the due diligence portion. Um, and they found it out after they acquired the company. So they have to, I guess, proceed accordingly. I guess there's, and I'm pr- sure there are probably easier ways to do it, less harmful ways uh, to people and staff of the company to do it. Um, I make, maybe they could take less money. Uh, you know, I know that's a kind of a foreign idea, idea, but, but you know, they have to cut, it's a business, right? At the end of the day, it's a business and they have to make it profitable again. And that's where they're, what they're trying to do. So good it luck. Sucks. Yeah, it sucks, but that's where we're at. So we will be getting Lethal Weapon 5 guys. Um, and don't forget, we're also getting a Dirty Dancing sequel and another Beverly Hills Cop film. So they're all coming back. They're all coming. It's been the it's been the nostalgia period of life, uh, as we saw with Top Gun Maverick, which just continues to more Nick Zednik. <laughs> it I I honestly cannot believe how well that movie has done, uh, and I like it. I like it a lot. Very good movie, but I never thought it would do these kinds of numbers. You like it more than Nick Zednik? So, oh no way! I love Nick Zednik. That's my dude. Zeddy. It's my dude. Zeddy. Love that guy. All right. I think we've come to the end of our program. That's all I have for this week. Are you scared? Of? I don't know. Halloween's coming up. Are you scared? <laughs> no, I don't generally get scared. No? Okay. No. So what? Oh, speaking of that, what is your plan for uh, Halloween ends? What do you... Uh, are you going to watch it movie in the theater or are you going to watch it at home? I guess that's my you question. You said you were going to rent out the Elmont Theater. We were going to have a watch party. I did not, but okay. You said, yes, you said. <laughs> you said your uncle Jebediah knows a guy. What? Who works at the Elmont what Theater. What am I, Amish? I'm not Amish. I don't know. Not my relative. <laughs> I think it's through marriage. Um, and he knows a guy who works at the Elmont Theater and you were going to talk about possibly renting it out and we're going to have a watch party. We don't and have Reno a theater come down anymore. From Montreal via train. He comes down. He watch movie with Eric and Peter. We don't like Myers stab people in Hollywood. Yes, we know train. <laughs> we don't have a theater in the town anymore. So, well, we'll just put up a Not sheet possible. and we'll get a projector. Great, I'm sure that. Well, that for that kind of movie, that actually might be <laughs> might add to the, <laughs> the spookiness of it. That might actually work. Uh, but yes, I'm a genius. Yes, genius engineer. Yes, me Reno. Okay. All right, Pete. Well, this is well, actually how Craven should sound in the movie. Yes, Craven Hunter. I hunt Spider Man. You think he can hide from me on wall? I hunt, I hunt tiger in jungle. <laughs> Craven, yes. yes. Okay. Me, Craven, yes. Okay. Horseman, yes. Me, Craven, challenge you, Horseman, to, uh, to a lion uh, fight. Mm. Yes, man. Two men enter, one man leave. I don't know where to go with that. Uh, Thunderdome, yes, yes. Ella Horseman. Champion Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leave. Two men enter, okay. one man leave. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> you're so enough. You're such a dud these past couple of weeks. Wrap it up. Eric has no fun. He wants to have like no fun. He's all upset because he's worried about Zach Wilson and the friggin' Jets. I'm like, oh, God, I don't know what his problem is. This is what I deal with daily. Eric Holzman, Zach Wilson. It's unbearable. Daily, yes, you do. Daily, 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 daily. Yeah, this is my, my daily Holzman problem. Uh-huh. Oh God, Eric! Eric, he's like Zach Wilson. No, 
Ashley, unbelievable. If it wasn't for Aaron Judge, Eric would have nothing in life that makes him happy. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, think about it. The Islanders, you're not happy about. The Jets, you're miserable. You're a Nick fan. That's just that's that <laughs> speaks for itself. It's Aaron Judge or bus, baby. It's not the time for this. This is not not the time for this conversation. <laughs> Come on, Eric. How many times have the have the Knicks disappointed you in life? Plenty. How many times have the Jets disappointed you in life? Plenty. How many times has Aaron Judge disappointed you in life? Not that often. Exactly. It's it. That's all you got, man. Oh, you got Leia. Well, no, I mean, the Yankees as a whole, my in my <laughs> life, have been pretty, been pretty um, good. So I don't have any com- complaints about them. Right. For the most part. Yeah. You just you just hate the ballpark. Now you, on the other hand, you haven't had much success in your other sports either. Maybe the Devils. The Devils. But the Pacers the suck. Let's be honest. The Pacers suck. So let's not let's not go at like they're much better than the Knicks. And uh Oh, they're much better than the Knicks. No, they're not. Yes, they are. What have they won? They've now never they won a championship. Fact, they, they, they have never won an NBA championship. They only won ABA developed their own play, they, they may have left, but they have developed their own players. <laughs> they may have left. <laughs> they may have left, but they have developed their own players. Well, yeah. I mean, they had that's very true. good postseason runs. I guess you, you could say you have as well, but you, you know, you, your it's team been a long time. Going. It's been a yeah. long time for both teams. But I definitely nice think my team, my team has a better point guard. It got the point guard it wanted. Yeah, I like him. Halliburton, I do. Halliburton's great. And they have Duarte. And they have, uh, I can't forget, that Turner. other draft pick, I can't, no, not Turner. Turner's good. I, Benedict Mouth, I can't pronounce his last name. Matherin. Ma- it, it, there's a B Matherin. in there. Isn't there no. a B in there? No, Matherin. Matherin. He looks really good. They're going to be good. They're going to be <laughs> they're gonna be much better than the Knicks in like a year and a half. We'll see. <laughs> they're going to be good. Have fun. You and Obi. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> Toppin. At least you got RJ. That's that's something. I, I'm I'm much happier with my basketball choice than I would be if I were you. No, I'm fine with it. I've you know that's I've just learned it's, to accept it by now. But I've learned to accept it. It's the truth. That's like that's not good. That's not a good. Sign. <laughs> you can't be like your team sucks. I've learned to be. I've learned to accept the team that I chose. I very well can be like that. Because uh, my only thing is, if your team was, say, if you were a Warriors, if Warrior you were a Warriors fan, fan or then I'd be a you, front runner. But I'm saying, at least you'd have a leg to stand on. You can't make fun of the Knicks when your team is nowhere near. Is my no, team? Is my team either. history is much better than the Knicks team history. Your history is about a building, dude. It's not. The Pacers have never won an NBA title. Never. That's, They've won right. NBA title. The Knicks have won two. The Knicks are irrelevant. The Knicks have always been irrelevant. They oh, they're irrelevant. The building. Yeah, they are. They're irrelevant. Okay, okay. A New they're, York team that's irrelevant? That's ridiculous. They're they're still, even with all their irrelevance, the top selling, the top valued team in basketball. They're because number of the one. City. Does it matter? Does the it make them stinks. irrelevant? The team stinks. It doesn't matter. The brand is bigger than the team. The team. There is no brand. It is the arena, not the team. It's not the arena. Yes, it team. is. It's no. the building. Not totally. No. Yes, it is. It's the building. No. They're also one of the original NBA teams, which is. And the Rangers are an original six team. What's that matter? Well, the Rangers are probably the biggest brand in the NHL, too. I don't they're think good. It, I don't when, think the Rangers branch is bigger than in the no. Maybe the that. Red Wings. The Red Wings suck recently, but Detroit. I they're known. Feel, I feel like it's got to be Montreal, brand wise. I don't know, but this is this is not a good conversation for this show. I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> so it's our show. We do whatever we want. So yeah, but we, I want people to listen. I don't want people to just. They've just already turn listened it off though. The end. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap this one up. Let everyone know where they can find you. Uh, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Zach Snyder's favorite platform, Vero Pete Illustrated. Uh, you can listen to this podcast. You can follow this podcast at Strand of Gotham at straight underscore O underscore Gmail with Instagram, Twitter. 
Uh, we have a Facebook group, Facebook fan page. Uh, follow Italians for Spider Man. Uh, that is uh, me, Nico, and Nicholas Caruso. That's fun there. At TBLO Oval. Uh, follow me there. Uh, Batman on film, I'm all over that place. So I'm all over social media, and uh, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, that sounds about right. As you guys know with me, you can find me on Twitter at Finally33, spell Finale33. As Pete mentioned, check us all out on Facebook, group, page. Um, I'll be putting, I put up a question about favorite Halloween memories, guys. So if you have them, go onto the Facebook group and straight out of Gotham and no, tell me your responding. favorite Halloween memories. Um, I've got about five or six, but... <laughs> I will be reading them when we do the Halloween show. I'll read some of them. As long as I, you guys allow me to, I will do that. Uh, I recently just started um, doing a weekly show, weekly live stream about um, the Disney Plus Star Wars series Andor. Are you uh, enjoying that? First episode. Yeah. The first three episodes just came out on Wednesday. I did a show with Steve Helm, fan of the fan of the program uh, on Thursday night. So if you guys missed that, you can check it out. YouTube on our Facebook page as well. You can check it out over there. And uh watch the recap and then let us follow me along each week. I'm going to be doing every Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So with a revolving door of hosts, I don't know who my co-host is going to be every week, but uh, you guys will know when you come to tune in. So come check me, check up, check out that show there. Uh, Titans starts in, as we know, in, I think it was October, November, November, November. Sorry. Titan starts in November. I will be reviewing Titans for Batman on film starting in November. So you guys can look out for that as well. That is coming down the road. As we were talking about the New York Knicks, I have my New York Knicks podcast. That's all nicked up at all underscore nicked underscore up on Twitter. If you're fans of the New York Knicks, look out for the podcast and the live streams. We're actually doing one this coming week. As the season kicks off, we will be discussing uh, the Knicks and their outlook on the season and the gen and general NBA topics as well. Cause there's a lot, there's been a lot going on. If you follow basketball, there's been a lot going on, especially the past couple days. So uh, we will be getting into that as well. And unless you have anything else, Pete, I believe that's it. Ooxus. <laughs> All right. So for Pete, this is Eric. You're listening to straight out of Gotham and we'll see you next time. Booyah.